All right, ready? I am. I don't know how to work this at this <laughs> button. No. Because I feel like you're subconsciously going to be sipping on it. You want me to say scissor, and I won't do it. Scissor. Hello and welcome back to Night Cheese Book Club, the book podcast, spoiler free of course, where we discuss hot books, hot topics, hot yeah. temperatures. Yeah. No, um, don't bring that up. Uh, It'll just bring us down. I was, what? I was just going to bring up hot urban legends, but that just made me think of like Bigfoot in a bikini and I was like, I don't hate it. Somebody really likes it. Oh out yeah, there. yeah. All that erotica. Somebody's That's writing the it. Whole thing. It's just Henry Zabrowski. <laughs> yeah. No, he he's <laughs> made it more popular. That's, he's the that's number his one fault. Bigfoot erotica salesman. Yeah. Well, that sounds good when he reads it. What? He's got it. He's got a massive talent. <gasps> he's got a huge yes. talent. Oh, yes, I need your poetry now. Oh. This is no. Okay. Well, you're inviting trouble from a cat. This episode, as all episodes, <laughs> I'm your host, Suzanne, and my co-host here, Presley, Hi. is my lovely sister, mm. and we are bringing you Night Cheese Book Club. This week's episode is The Only One Left by Riley Sager, with a theme of urgent, ur, urgent, 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 ur, legend. urgent legends, urban legends. We gotta tell you about them. <laughs> There you go. The We're high tech. We've got a soundboard. Normally it's urban legends, but then it becomes that if you really have to pee, then it's an urgent legend. True, true. <laughs> if you're finishing a story up and you're telling somebody the end of it, but you got to get out of there. Yeah, or they keep talking and you have to pee, but you're too shy to be like, I got to go pee. And instead you stand there and you almost pee your pants trying to unbutton them by the moment you get away. They are about to walk into the house of the Swamp Witch whose eye you look into to see how you die, right, which, and you just want to give them a yeah. heads up urgently. Which sounds really important, but not when you have to pee. Would Nothing you do it? Important. Would you look into the eye? Of course I would. Would I? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is that even a question? I feel like... Who uh, wouldn't? Literally, even the Who more... I want to know? The more mundane choices we have day to day, I'm picking the crazy one. <laughs> that is so true when people say, Who would go outside to investigate the noise? I always yeah, will. I'll have a look. I mean, you don't get to Narnia by sitting on your ass. I'll yeah. give you that much. Spice it up. That's all I'm saying. That's so, it's true. Yeah. Spice it up, people. Well, before we jump in, what have you been up to since we last spoke? Um, not too much, but obviously, so I am on my health journey. And normally I walk a lot, but I've started running recently, and I actually really like it. At first I was like, this is horrible, and I'm dying. And then I started, like, running regularly where, you know, I don't feel like I'm dying, and I'm like, this is actually quite nice. Uh, except I wish that uh, I couldn't be perceived for, like, an hour a day. I wish I got, like, invisibility. An invisibility cloak is yeah. what I need. Yes, where I could just do whatever I'm doing out in public, because I have to run out in the public, and I wish I could just be invisible for, like, an hour. Wear glasses is my recommendation. Oh, my God. She was beautiful all along. That's true, yeah. Glasses and sweatpants. Yeah. And no one will see me. No, other women can still see me. It doesn't count. I think that for the most part, other people don't care. Or if they did care, they're like dicks, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I was about to say, honestly, when I feel like I'm out there, literally no one even gives it a second look. And, and I will also say, health is wealth. Yeah. And also, I think that a third of the time running, you're supposed to feel like you're dying and you hate it. And then another third... You love it and you're aesthetic. Aesthetic? Aesthetic. Aesthetic. And then the I other I am aesthetic <laughs> too. <laughs> Wink. There you go. And then the other third is that you forget that you're running or doing anything other than thinking. 
That's true. I'm just focusing on breathing and, you know, making sure I still am breathing. So that's been really cool. It's important. What have you been up to? I hate to be this guy, but I am so stoked for fall. I'm just getting excited for fall. I'm getting rid of things in general, but I did get a small pumpkin pillow. Why do you hate to be this guy? I feel like we're all this guy. Because I also do appreciate the summer, and I hate that people sure, like to yeah. be like, it's July, and now it's Halloween. <laughs> and like, no offense if that's you. Well, actually, maybe a little bit. I'm fr- it's, you're talking about me a little bit. I'm, but I, I am spooky 24-7. I'm here for it. There's summer horrors. There's winter horrors. Fall is the most appropriate time for horror. That's a natural inclination. But yeah. I don't want to not appreciate the summer and just jump right into fall. I still appreciate the summer. Sure. I picked myself a tomato and I love it. No, and we just went, you know, we were, we've been walking through gardens and stuff, and it's been beautiful, but just for, you know, funny sake, um, if you were to describe a perfect fall day, uh, go now, we'll all, everyone close your eyes, and I want you to describe this, and we'll just, this is just a little snippet, we're not, not appreciating summer, but just a little snippet, go ahead. It's slightly chilly, I wake up early, I have a cup of tea or coffee, and read a book for like an hour while looking out my front door windows, windows and doors, oh, at some, oh, uh, leaves. I mean, they're crisp. They're browns and oranges and reds. It's lovely. A deer treads gently through the forest. A fox scurries past. What color's the fox? Burnt sienna. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, and then you have some, you know, Starbucks, you go to a cafe, you write, you read, you go for a walk through the woods and the woods are just singing. And you just, you get excited for that New England trip you're going to take just to drive up the coast to New England and there's just, the leaves are full. For book signings and then you finish the night off cozy as hell with like a broccoli cheddar soup Mm. and you watch a a a scary movie. In a bread bowl. Or you watch (laughs) Practical Magic for the um, team time, yeah. Yeah, the 2030th time. Yeah. A nice cocktail, and then at the, toddy. En- at the end of the night, your eyes are getting heavy, you kiss your picture of Rachel Harrison goodnight, and mm-hmm. then you go to sleep. That sounds wonderful. I wish we could bottle that. Say, sweet dreams, R.H. <laughs> Bless us with something else. <laughs> and she says, please take your medicine. <laughs> please stop DMing me. And I say, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Oh, well, I don't want the voices quiet. (laughs) (laughs) The medication makes me dizzy. (laughs) Yeah, I'm lifeless. No, everyone, everyone, please take your medicine. Take your medicine. Listen listen to your doctor. Life's better medicated if that is what your brain needs. Don't make us the bad guys. Yeah. Or have a fun break. (laughs) Or are we the bad guys and these are just the voices? (laughs) Who knows? Who knows what's real? What? So Riley Sager, yes, prolific, a prolific writer, so many books. I've read, I would say the majority of them, and I enjoy them, but there's definitely a handful that I tend to DNF just because they get a little, I don't know, I think it's more over me. I think I'm maybe not in the right place sometimes when I'm reading them because they're very typical mystery thrillers. Okay. Did you you read Final Girls? I did. You liked that one? I did. Come uh, on. Say I it out did, loud. I did, but I I'm going to say by, you know, by the fun and games portion of Act 2, I started losing interest. That's a hot take. But uh, you know, for transparency's sake, that is when I should be gripped and I was not gripped. And okay. I felt disappointed. What about um, House on the Other Side of the Lake? Uh, House Across the Lake. That one I haven't read yet. Okay, I haven't read that either. And especially I saw that they might be like making a movie out of it or something. Ooh. I'm going to read that one first. Especially, I did quite enjoy this one. So I actually will read another. Um, but a lot of the reviews that I was looking at did have that complaint of 
that some of the stuff is a little bit too like, similar, but like yeah. I'm not mad at that anyway. Like things can be like formula I'm, I, heavy. Yeah, I'm also not bothered by similarities, but yeah. it just if it's good, it's good. If not, I mean it's not. It doesn't matter to me if I've heard it before or not. If it's a different story, I'll I'll have a listen. Yeah. So But I, I liked it. I really liked uh Lock Every Door and I liked Home Before Dark. And I think that a lot of people will feel the same way that there was a lot of similarities between The Only One Left and Home Before Dark. Like, just in some themes where you're like, what are we doing? Is this the same thing? But then it really, like, veers differently. Good. Good. Well, and Final Girls was his debut novel. So, oh. that being said... And there also was, like, a rash of Final Girl books at the time. There was, yes, I've seen a lot of those. Which I hate to say this, and we don't typically give a lot of, you know, hot reviews, but I generally like most of what I read. Oh. Same. I love Grady Hendrix. I love him. I think he's fabulous. Some of his writing is just so fun. I didn't like his Final Girl Support Club. Hmm. I think yeah. because, and it came out after Riley Sager's book, but they were too similar in a way oh. that I was like, er, did you guys talk about this or anything? Because maybe you should have had a... But if you, had to, if you had to pick one of them. Riley Sager's. Okay. I think, but because I read that first, maybe. Oh, well, now I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll see what happens. I'm um, lost in the sauce. Riley Sager, you know, he's native Pennsylvania. Yeah. But now lives in Jersey. Oh, why? I guess. Oh. Yeah, have fun there. Mm. Yeah. Why leave the land of kings, I say? We also left. <laughs> we did. We, we had to go. We also left PA, yeah, so we got <laughs> That was court-ordered, though. <laughs> <laughs> but we also went south, so you know what? Like, at least we didn't move into a giant... Um, Armpit butthole. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. kidding. We love New Jersey. Yeah. I think the point, too, is that if you're from Pennsylvania, you have to poke fun at New Jersey. Yeah. It, New Jersey's it's like your thing. your ugly cousin. Yeah. Your ugly cousin who still uses a bump it. Yeah. Like, they're doing gross stuff, but it's still your cousin. And, and nobody else so can make good stuff there. Yeah. Like, no one can what? She, she's got all the good drugs. She's cool. Yeah. She's really funny. She's fun to hang out with. But, like, she still kind of smells like trash. But you still she was shotgun a beer at 9 a.m. Yeah, which is awesome. But you still love her. Yeah. I like that. Um, good for her. I also liked that when... And, of course, I take a little peruse of the Instagram pages on his. Lots of Disney stuff. I know, you're making a face, but I... When your voice went there, you well, somehow the had an old. apron on. <laughs> I just, and you were holding a chicken. He just knows what good vacation it is, and that's Disney. I am not disagreeing, right. but at the same time... Don't be a... Don't you also want to go to an enchanted forest in Forks, Washington? Yes. Don't but you want to go to the Sky Bridge at the Grand Canyon? I can do all of those things. Don't be a hater. Okay. No, that's exactly my point, that you should do all those things. See, yeah, go on all the vacations, but... Go to New Jersey. I love Disney. This will make you like... Also, pictures from the Taylor Swift concert. Uh -huh. There you go. So, you know what? I'm sold. Yeah. It's universal. It's just good. Um, so, this one is published June 2023. So, it's it is... Fresh. It is a newbie. It is. I meant to read it immediately when it came out, but there's just so many things right now to get to. God, so much reading. We've been doing a lot of reading for you, plainly for you guys, not for Only our, for you, not I for our it. own enjoyment. No, it's good. I really, I really liked it. I think this might be my favorite that he's written so far. That's what a lot of people are saying. That's what the reviews are saying. That like this up. is him hitting his stride in this, and like this is the prime. So if you're even going to start with any of his books, because this is my first one of his that I'm reading, I quite liked it. Like, I thought it was very, it was a fun read. Um, it was a little bit on the longer side, but I actually didn't mind that too much. Although I will say, and we're doing spoiler free, and this book is a thriller. But for the sake of uh, the ending, man, I was like, I heard the ending, because I, I listened to this on Audible. I, which actually I really like the narrator, but I heard it on Audible and the end was like, bam, 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 bam. And then I was like, what? 
<laughs> what happened? What happened? What did you say? Yeah, so like... Uh, it, it wasn't great. It was I twists switched and turns. And forth. I like to do a three-way combo of audiobook, Kindle, and paper. I don't have... It's insane, I know. But it's kind of like you can just read continuously every time you have a spare moment. Yeah, if I had to pick my preferred method, it's reading the actual book. But at work, I usually have to do audiobook because I'm using my hands. But sometimes at work, I've got the... If I'm reading the book, if I have time, headphones are purely or ornamental just so others won't talk to me. Mm, so it's not a bad idea. I thought it was quite good. Um, I agree. So do you want to do the uh, summary? Mm. Or shall I? You do it. I did the last one. Okay. Well, okay, so this one actually has quite a long summary. Read the first paragraph. That's what I do. <laughs> well, this one says, Now reduced to a schoolyard chant, the Hope family murder shocked the main coast one bloody night in 1929. While most people assume 17-year-old Lenora was responsible, the police never able to, the police were never able to prove it. Other than her denial after the killings, she has never spoken publicly about that night, nor has she set foot outside Hope's End, the cliffside mansion where the massacre occurred. Now it's 1983 and the home health aide Kit McDear, McDear arrives at a decaying Hope's End to, to care for Lenora after her previous nurse fled in the middle of the night. In her 70s and confined to a wheelchair, Lenora was re rendered mute by a series of strokes and can only communicate with Kit by tapping out sentences on an old typewriter. One night, Lenora uses it to make a tantalizing offer. I want to tell you everything. As Kit helps Lenora write about the events leading to the Hope family massacre, it becomes clear that there's more to the tale than people know. But when new details about her predecessor's departure come to light, Kit starts to suspect Lenora might not be telling the complete truth and that seemingly harmless woman in her care could be far more dangerous than she first thought. Mm -hmm. Now, it did come with a spooky poem because, as they say, um, that she's reduced to the schoolyard chant, and they do have a schoolyard chant. Suzanne, I think you should do this, <laughs> but like, you know, in a mockery child's tone. Ted, go for it. Where is it on here? It's the black ones. Oh. You know, a uh, note to whoever did this graphic design. There's not enough no, contrast there. No, back. Come on. This makes my stomach hurt. Here, I wrote it on my paper if that helps. I gotta know. Okay. Uh, buckle up. At 17, Lenora Hope hung her sister with the rope, stabbed her father with a knife, took her mother's happy wife. It wasn't me, Lenora said, but she's the only one not dead. Why is it that whenever a child name. involved, you always think Cockney Child from the Cockney Newsies? Cockney Child. He's got a Jeff cap and smudges on his face. I feel like it's every time we bring up children, they're British. I don't know why. It's because we don't know anything about children. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> so we're only going from horror movies. From the Newsies or like, yeah, the orphanage or whatever. Yeah, just just Silent Hill all over again. Spooky That's child. That's just what they all look like, I think. Fair enough. Um, it's I like, cuter that way. That's, you know what, that's so true, because normally they're, like, sticky and stuff, but if they're, like, a little British child, I assume it's clean. That's so true. A British accent makes you seem cleaner than you are, perhaps. Uh, a child. Actually, yeah, I, I think so. an adult, too. Okay, now that I'm thinking, yeah, I guess. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could see They that. just seem so civilized. That's, yeah, they're cleanly. I guess that's kind of their farm. They're cleanly people. Well, yeah. Tricking people into thinking that their civilization is the only one. Yeah, taking <laughs> things that aren't theirs. They're British. Um, so Just kidding. Mm. I like You'll it. never catch us. <laughs> We're free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we ended this yeah. conflict. Um, it's clearly going really well, and not like a gang of these children have gone to make their own country. Yeah, or just a country built on pickpockets. And uh, OD Day. Hardcore ODD of oppositional defiance disorder. We don't like to be told what to do. Yeah, you don't, which is why Americans <laughs> don't. Um, what I liked about this book was I love a crumbling mansion frozen mm. in time. Who does not? Who does not? 
I mean, it brings to call like so many other, you know, timeless books. I just love the idea of that, where it's something horrible happened here and everything kind of stopped. Mm, Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak, um, Great Expectations, stuff like that where it just... Mm, Weathering Heights. Yeah, like I love that. Um, a lot of good twists. I love an unresolved cold case brought up later. Ah, uh, yes. Love it. Man. Especially the... if you love true crime, but true, you yes. are not in the mood for, like, actual true crime, or you're like, as, like me, I have to take breaks from it because it depresses me in a weird way. Um, this was good true yeah. crime that was just in a kind of fun way to ingest it. And if you want, like, full resolution to your true, true crime. crime. Fiction crime. Fictional true crime fictional crime. It had a poem. It must be real. That's so... I mean, who does not remember the first time and place that they read The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo? I... What a whirlwind. I literally was about to bring up Girl with the Dragon mm. Tattoo. You read my mind. This is exactly what it is. And then, oh my god, I love that where you just show up and there's like, there was a murder here years ago and it was never solved. It's, yeah. Do, 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 do. Like, interesting setting anyway. Interesting characters. I'm on board. And then you're throwing in a crime that we're gonna investigate together? A cold case? Yes. yes, we didn't miss the solving of the crime. We're there for it. I'm on board. That's this book. I if, brought a magnifying yeah. glass. <laughs> I'm ready. You just always have one. I found a clue. I, <laughs> I like that. Um, so, you know, obviously this is about urban legends too, just because Lenora herself is this urban legend murderer lady. Um, there's only a few around here that I would even say that we're still talking about, like the Jersey Devil. Oh yeah, I love the Jersey Devil. I also love the Jersey Devil, but I feel like, uh, you know, I know too many, like, drunk New Jerseyans that are like, let's go into the woods to search for uh, it. You don't go into the Pine Barrens because, I mean, yes, the Jersey Devil lives there, but also Pineys live there and they will disappear you. They don't mess around. It's serious. It's it's dangerous. You shouldn't go there. You don't know what you're doing. Unless no. you're also a Piney. Yeah. In which case, you're great. <laughs> Everything's yeah. fine. We're not mad. I thought about uh, Bryn Athen, which is a pretty small community near where we're from-ish. Uh, that's, I mean, I'm just gonna say it. It's like a weird religious cult, the Swede Borgians. Yeah, I don't want to use the C word, but the whole kind of. town is this weird little cult. A lot of old money, gorgeous homes, like castles, legitimate castles. Like they flew the marble marble in from Carrera, and. Um, the Pitcairn family is from there, and there's a lot of weird urban legends about them keeping, like, inbred yeah. sorts of hideaway peoples in their basements and stuff. They gotta keep that money in the family. You know who's from there? The Gyllenhaals. Mm. And Dr. Oz, if mm. that tells you anything. It explains a lot. Yeah, and, like, they have, like, Pitcairn Castle, which is still there, and they still, like, live in it, and sometimes they host weddings on it. Um, weddings? And then, like, summer concerts? Do you yeah. remember going there? No. I should... We went. I should not be allowed on that kind of terrace. Yeah, like, I sort of remember it. I only remember one day uh, me and my dog were like, we're gonna go uh, search the woods, and we were in the woods the whole day, and then we came out of the woods, and we were waiting at the nursing home across the street. We were waiting in the parking lot to get picked up. And this old woman, literally, I see her, I don't know, 50 feet away, slowly coming at me with a walker. And I'm like, oh, God, she's going to bother me. Finally gets to me and goes, what are you doing here? And I went, we're way disappeared. <laughs> no, we, <laughs> yeah, she turned to dust and she blew away. Um, I said, we're getting picked up. And she went, how rude. Well, she went, mm -mm. and then she just turned around and walked away. And I'm like, you exerted your day's energy to come question me and it's not like like I was like sitting in front of their front door or whatever they had this or coming through their mailbox yeah they had this massive parking lot that I was literally at the very end of just waiting to like near a busy road waiting to get picked up clearly you brought your dog to walk I, while you did your hoodlum thing and like he had his bandana on he was just <laughs> he was just having a good how time how could you be upset about a handsome boy i know and mm. that's what i was just like hmm, mind your own business how rude 
I know, but that was probably the highlight of her week, and she told everyone that she was standing out against she ruffians. She scared off some hoodlums. There you go. Even though we went home and had a nap. I was also going to mention, and listen, nobody put us on any more lists than we're already on, but we live nearby to the proximity of APG, which is Aberdeen Proving Ground. There is a ton of urban legends about that place anyway, and Edgewood Arsenal, where people say that they did alien experiments and stuff like that, all kinds of like wacky stuff. There is really good episodes from last podcast, podcast yeah. on the left, and really it's late. just wild because it's like well they did the defunct quotation marks now, but you know what I mean the MK Ultra stuff. A lot of it was done there. It's just wild because it's like I don't know, so nearby. Yeah, well, it's literally down the street. Like sometimes we'll you don't just... know where we live. <laughs> well, APG's <laughs> huge, actually. So yeah. like you don't know, but like we'll walk. You'll around. never find us if you're just out walking near it. The police show up. It's, yeah, I don't know how many times that has happened. And there I'm is just, like, cameras in the woods around there because the police will just show up. There also, do you remember the time we were walking and there's that bag of wigs? Yeah, <laughs> like was, spilled no, out through a tray. A it was a duffel. It was bag. a duffel bag with like Full twenty to thirty wigs. It was that's weird. That's weird, but also if you were trying to get back at somebody, stealing their wigs would be <sighs> a huge blow. Wigs are so expensive, especially uh, if you got them the way that you want them. Yeah, and you're like matting it all up, and then you got to brush them out. That would be a bad. And now a deer is wearing your wigs. Yeah, and she looks fabulous. Because that's a lot of money. No, I'd be pissed. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of time. So, we thought for funds this time, um, I was perusing the internet for some fun urban legends or whatever, and I found this one, and I thought that it would be fun to do a little, like, recap of it. So, this one is uh, Mercy Brown and the New England Vampire Panic. Because, you know, nothing gets a community riled up like vampires. Agreed. I feel riled right now. I feel riled in a different way where I'm like, well, what sort of media can I consume that has vampires? <laughs> they were worried that they were going to be murdered in their sleep. So it's a little different now. Um, but this, uh, Mercy Brown lived in Exeter, Rhode Island. And the town was being plagued with tuberculosis or consumption, as they were calling it at the time, which, as you know, as a nurse, tuberculosis, it's high fevers, hacking, bloody cough, visibly wasting away. Also, for us non-nurses know that from watching Moulin Rouge. Right, um, right. With Night sweats and yeah, chills. Poor Nicole Kidman, their love could never be. Mm. Um, Come what may. <laughs> don't make me cry. Uh, so the... <laughs> I, my favorite part, well, no, this isn't my favorite part. One of my favorite parts in it is in 1982 when this was like a real problem, a doctor blamed tuberculosis on, and I quote, drunkenness and want among the poor. Because we want too much. That's <laughs> why we wear drunkenness. That's how, like, mm. doctors, mm -hmm. God, they're just... It's they do a lot of victim blaming. I know, like you're gonna be mad at somebody for having TB. Yeah, Jeez, it's because you're poor. <laughs> yeah, you wanted for too many things, mm. you poor. Um, so before she died, like her mom and sister died, and then like years and years later, Mercy died because apparently she had the TB, where like it takes a while for it to kill you. Where you, TB it's... usually takes a while. Well, that's what. Yeah, it's like unsymptomatic, and then all of a sudden she died. Now, she did have a brother named Edwin, where he left for Colorado Springs to improve his health, so he was away for a bit. Luckily, luckily, Edwin could go to Colorado, but everybody else stayed home to die. The women don't deserve to yeah. travel. How nice for Edwin. Um, his name was Edwin, though. That's true. That's a punishment in itself. Sorry, Edwins. All our Edwin followers. Um, when he finally came back, he was still dying. And it was suggested that one of the women in the family wasn't actually dead and was feasting on him. Uh, like, punished after you die, too. So they dug up the graves, and the mother and sister were bones. Yeah, that is 
heinous. It's disgusting. Yeah, because of the, the body. idea of digging up bodies. Oh, I, uh, you gotta really, you gotta really want something with that. Um, since they had died so long ago, but they also dug up Mercy, but she was still kind of intact. Now, on the on the article I read, it said that it had been like a cold winter and, you know, this and that. So, like, she had seemed like, you know, normal that a body would still be together or whatever. Preserved-ish. Um, so then they took out her heart and liver and burned them on a rock and then fed them to Edwin ah. so that he would get better. Oh. And uh, then he still died. Because he ate a corpse's heart and liver. I or think, that's unrelated. I think the TV was the majority of it. But yeah, I can't see that being good for you. I think the doctor is going to skirt any kind of real science questions. Yeah, and then he's like, maybe he was poor. <laughs> this liver wasn't rich enough. But yeah, I thought that was like oh, a... that's heinous. Like, who that would be... I mean... Man, what a time to be alive where you oh. truly would be terrified about vampires coming for you. And like that old-timey medicine, what if we ate her heart? Eat her heart and liver. It'll give you strength. Yeah, like, I, I like that kind Ooh. of stuff, but reading that, I was just like, why? Come on. I'm not going to out which one it is, but I don't know if I even told you. Um, right now, the morgue was closed in the hospital where I work. And somebody died, and nobody, like, gave us a heads up. So you, at night, there's not anybody to transport a body. You have to take them yourself. So you get them all, like, ready or whatever. And then we went down to get specifically, like, a morgue stretcher, which is, like, a metal stretcher with a thing over it, like, this giant box. People aren't going to know what you're pushing through to a hospital. Sure. Yeah. But we went and they were like, oh, you have to go get it from like the back doors now. Does the box say, not a body? <laughs> Without words, it does say that. Okay. But we had to go get this stretcher. They literally, the, the morgue was closed and they put out a refrigerated truck. Like it's COVID all over again, but this is saying something. It wasn't even as nice as it was during COVID. Oh. It was like, oh, this truck was like already almost full and just kind of ridiculous and we couldn't get it up the ramp the body and it was coming back on somebody and I, I'm glad that I went with them because that would have been I mean <laughs> I would just roll over oh my God. and because uh they're doing some updates and fixing some stuff there weren't any lights on so this is like you're taking this body out back through piles of trash. There's no lighting because the lighting's out. So there's just like a construction lamp. It was spooky as hell, which is how they got me to help them in the first place. Because oh I was like, did someone say spooky? Oh my god. Uh... And yeah, it was spooky as hell. It was very hard to get this stretcher with the body onto the truck. It isn't was it, wild. Isn't it really weird? I just, I remember when you were like 12 and then now you're just like pushing around dead bodies and then we're acting like, and I'm legally like, really sanctioned to do so. Now we're just recording a podcast. Isn't that wild? And like, I know it's probably gauche that they wouldn't, they definitely would not want me to tell anyone about this. Yeah, that'd stop us. But I, I want the world to know. <laughs> And I mean, it's, come on. Sometimes it's one of those things where you have to stop and say, this is a weird job, right? Like, it's weird that we're okay, doing this. That's exactly what I meant by it, where it's like, I remember when you were a kid, we it, were just recording a podcast now. We've been hanging out away. You've been pushing around a dead body. I still think of you as being like eight years old. That has nothing to do with this. You're I'm touching dead you're people. allowed to drive a car. I touch a lot of dead people. That's weird. It desensitizes you in a weird way. Clearly. Right. Well, are we, uh... On that note. <laughs> yeah, no, now everybody needs an upper now. Uh, yeah, do some... Oh, everything's better. Sunshine, yeah. rainbows, kittens. A poem will cheer you all up. I will say that my cat has been hanging out with us more and more since we've been recording. She definitely wants to be the third podcast host. Well, I will see. She sleeps too much, though. I think her controversial takes on things would get us canceled. She is rather spicy. Mm. Well, here, you read your poem first. Yeah, I'm going to go first. Okay. Okay. Legends live so large, bigger than story itself. 
Who don't love a rhyme? Why? Yours keep ending I keep, country. Listen. You love your, you with the accents. I do like it, though. I've been using contractures as a workaround to get the syllables right. That's, I won't apologize. That's cheating. That's not even cheating. And I'm calling the haiku police. Call E.E. E. Cummings, and he will tell you that my poem can be exactly as I want it to be. Then, you know what? Fine. What cheese did I pair it with, you ask? Yeah. Asiago. Sharp like cliffs. Tangy like the twisted tail. <laughs> I see the poem continued. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. I, I'm in a mood. I told you I'm ready for fall. Yeah. Okay, so mine is a poem sandwich where we'll it's... will give you a little bit more magic. Okay, okay. Oh. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mine's a poem sandwich where I feel like the outsides are poemy. The inside, just a hot take. Not, a, not even a hot take, it's just a take. Okay. On crumbling cliffs, that mansion was missing cats. A cold case revived. That is so true. It, it was to, missing cats. You're telling me you have a mansion. There's not one cat in there. Come on. There's not some derelict old cat. Yeah, be for real. A cat would, 90 cats would make that their home. That's so, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And a good summary. I think they should have played more. Well, I guess they did play enough on that. But it really is like this cold case. It's so interesting. I liked it. Um, I picked an aged cheddar. Because it seems a little dusty. Craggy. Yeah, so, like like the story, it's a bit dusty, it's old, you're going to blow the dust off, you're going to eat the cheese. And it's delicious. Yeah. And I like it. Agreed. Well. All right, well, I guess that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Unfortunately. <laughs> but we will be back. Yeah. Like, We're always back. Like this You'll mis- never be rid of us. Like this mysterious cold case. Like the vampires mm. haunting your family. Yeah. Make sure you... Convincing you to eat organs. Yeah. Make sure you cement over all those graves that you've all been digging because everyone's wheeling around dead bodies, apparently. Yes. Somebody's got to do it. That's true. Yeah. Might as well be me. Doesn't bother me. I guess. Well, what are you grateful for this week? Um, I said just for uh, noticing things, it is summer, so I'm sure you all noticed it's brutally hot, and it's driving me mad. So I'm grateful for air conditioning, because last year uh-huh. I did not have an air conditioner, and this year I do, and I'm fancy, and it feels so good, and especially after coming home after work, and I'm just so tired, and it's hot, and I feel like I can't breathe, stepping into cool air. I instantly am like, okay, maybe everything's not so bad. <laughs> and then I call my boss up and I go, okay, I don't quit. Just forget I said that. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very grateful for air conditioning. It's so nice. A lot can be said for just going, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> We're just playing around, right? We're friends. Ha ha ha. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, what are you grateful for then? Uh, it's specific and maybe also in my looking forward to fall. I am so thankful for like my favorite movies. I was thinking of how much I love Practical Magic, so shout out to Sandy and Nicole for making a masterpiece. They're just perfect in a it's yeah, just like oh, man, what a movie. It's fall in a movie. There's a love there's mystery, there's magic, magic, there's cats. What else do you want? A big old house. Oh, beautiful hair. Ancestral stories. Mm. Sisters. Sisters. What a lovely, lovely tale. I tried to do a raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> it was weak and diarrhea. I hate that sound. <laughs> oh my God. It's fine. Everything's fine. If you haven't seen Practical Magic, what are you doing? You need to go watch it. Normally, we don't say turn off the podcast. Turn off the podcast and go, well, you know what? It's the end anyway. You can do both. When this is done, go watch it. What are you doing? Go watch it. I'm actually mad if you haven't seen it, if I'm being honest. Truly. It's just, it's perfection. Yeah, you're only hurting yourself because that movie is just amazing. Yeah. It'll teach you how to poison people. Not that we need to know that. Yeah, nobody (laughs) said that. (laughs) Hmm. All right, well, that wraps us up for this week. Stay tuned for new episodes, episodes coming at you. Yeah, on all the platforms, on the YouTube, whatever. Cats, listen. 
subscribe, all right? Yeah, meow, meow. Like and subscribe. Yeah, meow, meow. Let us know what you're up to. What's your favorite fall movie? I bet I've already seen it. <laughs> all right, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye, friends.